Today we continue the celebration of the Epiphany of the Lord. Chances are you might be thinking that didn't we celebrate it last week and that this week is the celebration of the baptism of our Lord. Well, certainly we do celebrate that today as well. Although there are no three kings mentioned in the Gospel today, if you recall from last week what Epiphany literally means, which is to show upon, to be made manifest, then by definition, today's Gospel provides an epiphany of Christ to the world. Last week, the Bethlehem star shone its light upon uh, Christ laying in the manger and led the Magi and shepherds there. All while angels were singing joyfully the hymn of Christmas, Gloria in excelsis Deo, Glory to God in the highest. This week, a star does not shine upon Christ to the accompaniment of angels singing. But rather, instead, the heavens themselves are opened up, and from heaven the Holy Spirit descends upon Christ with God the Father solemnly declaring, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. So you tell me which of the two occurrences when you think about it is the more incredible manifestation and showing of Christ's divinity. The shining of a mere star? or the splendor of heaven itself with the radiance of the Holy Spirit, the singing of all of the angels, or a solemn declaration coming from God the Father himself. And so in contemplating a great mystery and event such as this today, this would leave any of us awestruck. And as we think about it and pray about it, a nearly universal question that people ultimately find themselves asking with regards to the Gospel passage today is, why did Jesus get baptized if he had no need to be baptized at all? The baptism of John, as we recall, was a baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. And it goes without saying that Christ never sinned, so what gives? To answer this question, first of all, it must be borne in mind that Christ is our shepherd and he shows us the way to the Father. He leads us to heaven. And so through his words and actions, we are shown the path by which we are to follow him. That path begins with the waters of baptism and rightfully so, for it has been foretold from the very beginning of creation. At the beginning of the world, the Spirit of God breathed upon the waters, which covered the formless void of the earth. And in the days of Noah, when the world was exceedingly sinful, and God sought to purify and cleanse the world of the sinfulness, he did so through the waters of the great flood. And when the flood subsided, a dove returns to the ark, bearing an olive branch in its mouth, which is a symbol of peace. And so we see in today's Gospel something similar, where the Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, descends upon and abides with Christ, who is, of course, the Prince of Peace. After the flood of Noah, God sought to free his people once again from the slavery of sin, this time from the Egyptians. And how does he do this but except by leading his people through the Red Sea, being led by a pillar of fire and smoke? At the Easter Vigil each year, we see something similar reenacted as the Paschal Candle, which is a, indeed a pillar of fire and smoke, is placed in the baptismal font. The Paschal Candle, which represents Christ himself, is not placed in the baptismal font to be cleansed, but rather it is Christ himself who, by being placed in the baptismal font, cleanses the waters there. And so we see in the Gospel account today that our Lord goes into the River Jordan, and so it is not Christ who is cleansed in the Jordan, but rather the waters themselves are cleansed. The waters do not sanctify Christ, but rather it is Christ who sanctifies the waters. And it is he who calls us to follow him into 
the waters of baptism, where we may be cleansed of our sins. And so that when we emerge from those baptismal waters, then we are anointed with sacred chrism, which is made from olive oil, and we receive a light from on high. That light we receive is taken from the paschal candle, and so we are enlightened by Christ to be a light to the nations, his disciples. And so we are sent forth, not just at our baptism, but at every Mass, to go forth and to make disciples of all nations. And it is from there that we are reminded of another thing at the end of Christ's life that he does. Not something that he personally needed for his own sake, but rather something that he does for us so that he provides an example to us at the consummation of our Lord's life. He bears the cross, and of course throughout his ministry we are told by our Lord to pick up our crosses daily and to follow him. And so although Christ had no need to die in atonement for his sin, but rather he does so out of love for us, and we are invited to follow him by picking up our crosses daily, and thus by following our Lord through the waters of baptism, and indeed through the cross itself, by faithfully following him throughout our lives, by dying to self and living for Christ, at the consummation of our own lives, we have the joyful hope of so too entering and rising with him into heaven, where that splendor and the light of Christ abides with the angels singing glory throughout all of eternity.